Hey, this is Robert Quimby, and I'm going to tell you about sigma clipping. So in astronomy, it's very common for you to go out and try and collect data of some population. And while you're recording your, your data from that population, there may be a second population of things you don't care about that get mixed into your data. So when you're analyzing your data, the right thing to do, of course, is to step back and say, hey, I have two populations in my data, and, and to treat both of those populations carefully when you're doing your analysis. I'm not going to talk about how to do that today. Instead, what I'm going to talk about is the kind of quick way to get around this fact, which is to remove the data points that you think don't fall into your parent, into the population that you care about. Uh, if you're lucky enough and there's a big enough division between the population you care about and the population you don't care about, there is a way to do this called sigma clipping. So we're going to talk about that. So today uh, we'll go over uh, how you can identify outliers from the distribution that you uh, care about. Um, this is not a perfect way to do this, but it's a one way that's popularly used. We will take a look at how your uh, sample mean and standard deviations uh, change as you uh, remove those outliers. And then we'll look at employing iterative techniques to actually go back and uh, figure out what our outliers are, reject them, and then using the new information about the, the mean and standard deviation of our sample, uh, do a second uh, iteration where we reject outliers again. And then we'll look at how many data points you can remove from your sample before you actually start removing sample data points. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to remove real data uh, in your analysis. You want to keep all the real values. So to get started, we're actually going to use some real data. We're going to use um, a, a bias image that was taken with our Mount Laguna 1 meter telescope. Uh, so we're going to load that data in. And now that we have that data loaded in, we can plot a histogram of it just to see what the distribution of values looks like. Um, so we need to pick how we're going to do this histogram. Uh, we're just going to take all the values and send it to plot.hist, and we can tell what range we want it to be plotted over, what the minimum and maximum values of the range are going to be, and then how many bins we're going to have. So to set the minimum and maximum range, it makes sense to just take the minimum and maximum values of our bias. So we'll take bias min and bias max. And then we'll plot this up, and then we'll have one bin for each data value. So we're going to have values that go from, say, 450 to 550. And so we'll have a bin at 450, 451, 452, et cetera, um, following this way. And with here is just going to make those bins um, wider so that um, the plotting appear wider, I'll show you, so that we can actually um, take a look at, on the screen here and actually see them. So these guys are, are going to be just thicker because of that width keyword. All right, so here's the distribution we have from our bias frame. Uh, you can see this is on a log scale here. So the vast majority of pixels are located around 450. And then there are a few pixels, and this is just one in each one of these upper bins here, um, that are scattered up all the way to almost 2,000. All right. So you can look at this pretty quickly and say, this is the distribution of bias values that I should have. And then I have some outlier pixels on top of that. So what we're going to do now is figure out how to identify these outlier pixels and ultimately reject them. All right, so um, one thing you can do to check for outliers is you can figure out what the median value of your sample is, or what you think your median value of your sample should be, and what its standard deviation should be. And then you look for pixel values that are some number of standard devi deviations above or below that expected uh, those expected limits. So we could take the, the NumPy mean of our, our bias frame, but since we do have those outliers, if you think about it for a moment, what, what, what are those outliers going to do? Well, they're all on one side, so they're actually going to raise that mean value a little bit higher than it should be. So instead of taking the mean, we can take the median and this is a little bit more robust when you have outliers. So remember, the median value is, is just the, the value that's uh, right in the middle of the distribution. So half the values are below and half the values are above. Now we saw on this plot that we have a few values. This is, you know, maybe 10 values that are uh, much greater than our, our expected mean value here. But we have a whole pixel. We have millions of, of, of bins here. So a few data points are not going to affect the median. Um, and then on top of this, we're going to take the standard deviation, and we'll see how we can deal with uh, 
the effects of those outliers and the standard deviation in a minute. But for now, we'll just take NumPy standard deviation of the bias. And we don't have to do this since we have so many data points, but just to be um, exact, we'll, we'll specify delta degrees of freedom of one. Okay, so that'll give us our, our median value for our image, which remember if you have a Gaussian uh, distribution, the mean and the median are equal. So the, the, the median value here is actually a, a good representation of the mean for that Gaussian distribution. So now we just need to out identify which are our outliers. And the way that we can do this is we can take our um, bias values and we can subtract off that median value. And that'll give us the difference. And what we care about really is just the absolute difference. We'll use NumPy ABS to get the absolute difference between the bias values, all those millions of values, and the median value we calculated. And then we're going to see how, how many standard deviations uh, off those pixels are. And then Finally, we're going to ask how many of those are some number of sigma away from the mean. So we'll say five sigma in this case. So we're going to find how many pixels are or five sigma away from above or below from the median value. And in this case, there's 136 pixels that we're going to consider outliers. We can just quickly plot what this looks like, just to give some graphical representation of what's going on here. So I'm just going to bring up this figure. And explain what's going on. So what we're doing is we're, we're identifying which of these pixels are bad and we're marking them with little red circles. So on the bottom of the image here we have a whole bunch of bad pixels on the bottom here and then scattered above there's just a handful of pixels that are, are deviant as well. So this uh, down here just so you know is a feature of our bias. It turns out that the values in this first couple columns here are a little bit off from the rest of the image. And these uh, pixels up here actually represent most likely cosmic ray events. All right, so we saw uh, that we have these outliers and we were talking about how the mean and median values might be discrepant because of that. But the outliers also have an effect on the standard deviation. So we're gonna take a look at that now. So first we're just gonna calculate again just the mean, not the median, but the mean value of our sample and the standard deviation. And we'll just print those out. And so here's the mean value is 462.93 and standard deviation is about 2.1. And this is the total number of pixels we have uh, in our image. And again, there's over 4 million pixels. We get a lot. So now what we want to do is actually identify the pixels that are not outliers. And, and we've, we've already got a variable that we could use to do that, but I'm going to define it again and just do it slightly different. So I'm going to have a, a new W here, which instead of being the outliers is the non-outliers. And so we can just do what we did before, take a NumPy absolute value of the, uh, we'll do the mean value in this time, so the bias minus the mean. And we're going to ask which of these pixels are less than five times the standard deviation. And then what we can do is we can take our bias sample, and we can just take a slice of it that corresponds to the values that worth, are within 5 sigma. So we're not using the outliers, we're just using the ones that are within the expected distribution. If I run this, we can see what the mean and standard deviation of that is. And so for the, the mean value actually didn't change that much, uh, 460.93, pretty much like we had before. It's a very small change. But you'll notice that the standard deviation actually changes quite significantly. So even though we just had 136 pixels out of 4 million that are outliers, they make a significant change on the standard deviation. And that's how this, uh, that has to do with how the standard deviation is defined. So this is a very important to note. And the result is that when we did that, that clipping calculation originally, when we removed the points that we thought were five sigma greater than the mean, um, we were using the wrong sigma. The sigma we actually used uh, should have been a little bit smaller. So we gotta think now, how can we deal with this? How, what is a more robust way to actually figure out what that standard deviation and mean are when we have outliers? So the solution is often to do what's called iterative sigma clipping. Now this can be very useful to do, but it is actually somewhat dangerous. You've got to be careful that you're not cooking your data here, that you're not over clipping your data. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a little function that will actually go through and calculate the mean and standard deviation and then figure out where the outliers are 
And after we've done that, we'll reject the outliers, and then we'll call the function again to do the clipping again. And we'll keep doing that until we've done maybe 100 iterations or however many we want, or if we stop removing data points. So if we get to a point when we, we try and clip out data points and we every pixel passes, we know we don't have to do it anymore. All right. So we're going to again start by using the median. That's a good estimator of the mean if you have a Gaussian distribution. It's more robust. Uh, we're going to use standard deviation of that sample. And then we're going to figure out which pixels are the ones that we want to use. And I'll just write this in one slightly different way that I've done already. So again, we're going to use NumPy absolute value of our sample minus our, me our med value, our median value. And then we're going to divide that by our standard deviation. And then we're going to take this whole thing and we're going to ask, is it less than some number of sigma? And by default, we're going to have n sigma set to 5, but we can change this to 3 or whatever. So we can reject pixels that are 5 sigma or 3 or 4 or whatever we put here. Okay, so once we've done that, then we can go through and we can say, uh, are we all done? Or should we just return this, this sample of values that we've uh, found? So we do that by checking if we're still uh, have iterations left to, to compute uh, and see if did we reject any points um, this time. Uh, if we did reject some points and there's more iterations left, then we can actually just return a recursive call to sigma clip. So we'll do sig clip again and we'll pass the sample with the good values, the ones that we haven't clipped yet. And we'll pass the um, n sigma, that's the, the constraint on where we're going to define that uh, sigma clipping. And then we're going to take the n inner we had and we're going to subtract one. So just every time we run this we'll subtract one from n inner, so when it gets down to zero then we'll stop. Okay, so we have our function defined now, and we can try and use it. We'll take our sample, um, well, sorry, we'll take our bias sample, and we'll run, uh, pass that to sig clip. It'll iteratively remove pixels, and ret finally return that, that sample after it's done as many iterations as it can, or until it's not no longer removing any pixels. And then we'll see how many pixels it removed, and what the bias uh, mean value and standard deviation is. So to figure out how many pixels we have removed, we'll take the size of the, the original size of the bias and just subtract off the size of our sample. So if I run this, we found that we've now removed 307 outliers through all of our iter iterations. The bias is, uh, the mean value is close to what we had before, 462.93, and the standard deviation now has dropped slightly more. So it's now 1.815. So slightly below what it was before. Um, sigma clipping is a very common task, and it's actually built right into AstroPy. So if you go to AstroPy stats, there is a function called sigma clip. And we can run sigma clip, very similar to the function that we defined, our sig clip, just by running it on our bias frame. Now the version of sigma clip uh, by default actually uses a, a value of n sigma of 3. So if we want to change that to match what we did before, we're going to do sigma equals 5. So if we run this with a, a threshold of 5 sigma, it'll run through and it'll turn numbers that should look very familiar because it's basically doing, it is doing exactly what we've coded up already. So, um, as I mentioned, the, the default value is actually 3. They do 3 sigma by default. So why, why did I pick 5? Why shouldn't we uh, do 3 in this case? Well, we should think about this. How do I know how many sigma I should clip my data at? And this is a, an important question. And you really have to think about what your data are. How are they distributed? What, what is the range of values? And you should ideally know something about your, your um, outlier population as well. And if you know something about the data you have and the distribution you expect to get, then you can actually predict how many outliers you expect to get by random chance. And then you should set your sigma clipping so that you don't remove any real data points. So to figure out if we should do three, four, or five sigma clipping, uh, we're going to start by figuring out how many 
um, pixels in our bias image, we would expect just naturally to be 3, 4, or 5 sigma, even if there was no outlier population. So the way we're going to do this is we're actually going to assume we have a uh, Gaussian distribution, um, that the, the true bias distribution is Gaussian, and then we can predict how many 5 sigma outliers uh, should we have. So to show you how we can do this, I'm just going to start by uh, defining a bunch of x values from minus 5 to 5. This is going to represent how many sigma away from the mean value we are, 5 sigma below or 5 sigma above. And then we're going to plot those x values, and we're going to plot the cumulative distribution of a Gaussian. So this is in SciPy stats, and we're going to use the norm for our normal distribution. And we're going to plot the CDF, the cumulative distribution function. Uh, and we're going to plot it for each one of these x values. So each x value, we're going to have the cumulative distribution to that point. And we'll plot this up and talk about it. So again, this is a cumulative distribution of a, of a Gaussian uh, distribution. And at any value, if you pick you know, this point right here, it's telling you the fraction of the population that is less than or equal to that point. So this is the fraction that is less than or equal to some number of sigma away from the mean value. So uh, by default, the mean value here is actually zero. That's our, our, our Gaussian mean. It's zero. And you can see that 50% of the data points are below zero. That's what you expect for a Gaussian. And the Gaussian symmetric, so again, 50% are above zero. Now, as you move one sigma or two sigma away from your mean, you can say how many points are below, say, two sigma below the mean. Right? So if I go to, if I look at all the points that are two sigma below the mean, I can see the fraction is a tiny fraction, just a few percent of all the data points are two sigma or less than zero. Uh, conversely, most of the data points are two sigma above the distribution or less. So since this is just giving us the fraction of our sample points that should be two sigma or one sigma or four sigma below or above, our distribution, uh, what we can look at is say how many data points do we actually have, and then we can predict how many of them should be, you know, four sigma below or four sigma above uh, the mean value. So before we actually get to that bias frame, let's just say we had a smaller sample. Uh, so let's say we had maybe just 50 data points. If we had 50 data points and we want to know how many three sigma outliers, what do we expect? Well, how do we calculate this? Well, we can again use our SciPy stats CDF, the norm uh, CDF, and we can pass it n sigma, and that'll tell us the, the number of values that are below n sigma. It's not quite what we want. We want to know the number of outliers we have, so we want 1 minus this. We only care if a given data point is three sigma away from the distribution. We don't care if it's above or below, so we don't care about the sign. And that means half of the values are going to be less than three sigma, half of the values are going to be greater than three sigma, so we're going to double count here, each one of these. And then we're going to multiply by the number of data points we have in data. And if we print out this, this will tell us that if we have 50 data points, we only expect 0.1 outliers at the three sigma level. Only 0.1. So basically, if you if you had a sample with 50 data points and you clipped out everything that was three sigma away, you would expect that none of your data are actually getting uh, none of the real data points are being removed. That you're only clipping out bogus values. So that's why people typically do three sigma because typically you might have 50 data points. But if you do have something like a bias frame where you have millions of values, and we run this we can see we expect a lot of three sigma outliers. Not just one, but actually thousands of outliers because we have millions of data points. So this is why we're using phi sigma. If we do phi sigma, well, then you'll get two or three out of that um, whole distribution. So this is much safer. We're not removing, we're probably moving one or two real data points, but the vast majority of uh, points that we remove are going to be outside of the di distribution, assuming it really is a Gaussian distribution. So hopefully this gives you some idea of the power of sigma clipping and the dangers of doing it. Uh, so enjoy.